Hello, uh, welcome back to uh, another lecture. I want to talk about function in math. I mean, you have heard that that normally we use we use function like f of x. Say we have f x is equal to x plus ten, and this is a function. If I put an input in a function, I should get a result back output. So if I say f of x of uh, three, then I'm going to have two time wherever I have x. That's where I put three. Uh, plus 10, so that gave me about 16. So in a term I want to show, you usually have x and y, and you show these results as 3 and 16. We can put another point in there, we can put another one in there. Let's put, do another one, for example, and make it f2. And that will be, uh, color the please. It'd be 2 times 2 plus 10, and that's 14. So now I have another point, which is uh, 2 and 14. Is this a function? Yes, because for each input that I have put, I exactly got one answer. So let's look at a couple of a uh, bunch. We're going to do a bunch of examples, and we're going to go over that. Uh, first one is look at the, let me bring this up on a computer. Right here, you should be able to see this. It says, uh, find out whether the relationship is a function, identify the domain and range. Okay, we're going to identify the domain and range of that function. And as you can see on the screen, we have uh, uh, minus 6 and 1, 0 and 1, 3 and 1, 9 and 1, and minus 3 and 1. So uh, basically, all our domain, which is our x, our domain, it should come out to... Uh, uh, 6 minus 6, start off from that, that's a nice looking 6, and uh, 0, 3, 0, 3, and then we have uh, 9 and minus 3. These are our domain, basically. And uh, range is basically, it's your y, and our range is only we have 1. So that's our range. So is this a function? Yes, because if we look at the... Uh, the number we have, and you can see these the x input. For each one of these, we have exactly one output. Now, if this was reverse, it would be a different story. Let's go to the next problem, which is the kind of opposite this one. Let me bring that up. Um, how about this one? Okay, so now we have 1, 3, 18. Let's find out the domain. The domain of that function is going to be, uh, let me use a different color here. So the domain is going to be, I'm going to put in a parenthesis just for now, 1, uh, 18, 39, and uh, 1, 18, 39, 1, and 56. 1 and 56. You, see, you notice 1, we have it twice. And a domain for, and a range for it is uh, uh, 3, Minus 6, 3 again, 8, and 8. Now, we said when we have a function for one port, one port which we're going to put in here, we should exactly get one output. In here, the x is 1 twice, and you got two different numbers. That's not a function, because for one input, you got two output. So, no function. This one is no. That one was yes. All right, let's go to the next problem. f of x is equal, uh, uh, let's use the one I have here, 1 minus 20 divided by x, 1 minus 20 divided by x. We want to know uh, what is the uh, domain of the function. Like, what kind of number I can put in here? That's what it's asking for. What kind of number I can put in here? So I can say, you know, uh, any number. I can put any number in there except uh, what? I can put all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity except for one number. There's one troublemaker here, and that's zero. We cannot divide by zero. There's a limitation. You go on your calculator and divide by zero. Your calculator gets angry with you. It's going to say error. And if you go on Google, it's what's Google do? What's the, what is the number divided by zero? I won't even talk to you. So 
number divided by zero does not exist. Anything, any number divided by zero is no, no, does not exist. So that's, we're going to look at this. Okay, what is our uh, domain for this? We're going to say our domain is uh, from negative infinity all the way to zero. Parentheses mean does not include zero. And from zero to infinity. That's one way we can show this. Um, the first one, it says, uh, a trucker enters the highway driving 60 miles an hour, and a car entered the same highway from the same ramp from the same spot uh, 14 minutes later, and then uh, goes driving at 67 miles an hour. How long would it take for the car to pass the truck? All right. Okay. Um, let's do this one. This problem. So uh, it says basically, let me bring this one up here. We have the highway they, right here, and the truck is going to go this way. Keep going. So this is the truck going, and the car coming later on going this way. And the truck, when it, the truck has an uh, advantage of 14 minutes. So there is a formula that we have in a book. It says uh, D is equal R time T. Distance equal rate time time. Uh, that works out good. So uh, for the truck, the time for the truck has extra 14 minutes. So the time for the truck is different. But they both, there's a point right here when a car get to a point, it's passing a truck just at that point. So they both travel the same distance right here. That becomes same distance. However, the truck has 14 minute time advantage on a vehicle. So what we're going to say, we're going to say, okay, distance of the truck, for the truck that has to travel, uh, dt, that's a d, by the way, of the truck is equal as going 60 mile an hour, okay, time, the time of the truck, the truck driving at t plus 14 minutes. We don't want 14 minutes, we want an hour. So when I say 14 divided by 60, we want 14 minutes in term of hour. So to convert 14 minutes to one hour, I mean, convert 14 minutes to hour uh, unit, you divide them by 60. All right. So now the vehicle, the car, CDC, travel at 67. I believe it is 67, I uh, was right. 67 mile per hour times T, T is T. However, DT and DC, they're both equal. That's what it passes. And ah, that's it. I got two equations that equal each other. From here, I'm going to say, okay, this equation, because dt is equal d car, same distance, I can say to myself, 67t is equal 60 times uh, t plus 14 divided by 60. All right, this marker is getting tired. Fire them, get another one. Where's the other one I had? Ah, they're hiding. So now I have uh, <clears throat> 67t is equal, 60 times t becomes 60t, and 60 times 14 divided by 60 becomes 14, right? Because those two cancel each other, so I remember with 14. And the same thing, we've done a million of these, bring 60t over here. So I got 67t minus 60t is equal 14, and therefore that becomes 7t equal 14, and divide both sides by 7. And from here I'm going to say, okay, t is equal 14 divided by 2. No, try again. It's not even Friday. Uh, 14 divided by 7. See, I'm so smart, I get on myself. What I meant is equal to 2. So it's 2 hours. So the answer, if the, it says give it in minutes. So 2 times 60 makes it 120 minutes. That's how long it takes for the car to catch up to the truck and pass it. All right, this is this question. Now we're going to go to the second question. Uh,
So that was pretty quick. So the qu second question is, a mother wants to invest $11,000 for the son's future education. She invests a portion of the money in a CD account at 4% and the rest of the money at 7%. The interest was $660. How much she invested in both account? Well, that's really, uh, let me bring back this down here. All right, so now we have a uh, four percent. It says a uh, total money is. It, there's two different ways we can we can do it. Let's do a shortcut and then we do a long way. And uh, first is uh, we're gonna have. It says uh, invest some amount of money at four percent. What? How much? Point oh four is a four percent. So when you have four percent. That's the same as 4 divided by 100, which is equal to 0 0.04. You knew that anyway. So 0.04%, invest some of it at 0.4%, invest some of it at 4% and invest some of it at 7%. How much is 4%? I don't know. Well, nobody knows. So we call it X. Great. And then plus, you're going to invest rest of it. So some of it at 4%, rest of it at 7%. 0 0.07, which is 7%, rest of it. How much is the rest of it? I know how much is the rest of it, but not quite. I know it's 11,000. Is that what it says, 11,000? Yeah. 11,000 minus X. Why? Because if I'm investing a little bit here, then the rest of it will be 11,000 minus that. And the whole interest of this came out to be six something, 660. Great. So how are we going to do it, uh, solve this? Simple equation, right? I got 0.40x plus 0 0.07 times 11,770. I think it is. I'm sure it is. Minus 0.07x is equal 660. And now let's rearrange. Put all the numbers together, all the x on one side. So minus 0.07x. So 0.04x, that comes out to, these two combined, it comes out to minus 0.03x. 0.03x. And if I put 770, I become minus 770. So that become minus 110. Uh, yes, it is. So now minus and minus cancel each other out. So I got 0.03x equal 110. That way, x become 110, 110 divided by 0 0.03. And therefore, my x has come out to... Uh, well, I did it. I know I did it. 36.66.7 dollar. So that's how much she invested in that account. The rest of it, well, of course, you can figure it out. There was a one way we do that. And if this was really hard to understand, there's an easy way we can do this. Let me do it right here and using a, a green is good. We're going to say uh, she invested 4% at the amount we don't know. Plus, she invested 7% in an amount we don't know. We call it Y. But when you add the profit of this 4% of this 7% comes out to 660. We also know that the total money she has is $11,000. So X plus Y is equal 11,000. Okay? So now I have two equations to unknown, which is easy. All I have to do is solve for one of these and plug it back in here. That makes it over there. So instead of a y, what does y mean? So y in here is, it comes out. I'm going to solve this equation. I'm going to keep y right here and ship x to the other side. It becomes 11,000 minus x. And when I plug this back in here, it becomes exactly the same equation. And that's how you do it. Hope this was helpful. Have a wonderful day.